Hello viewers and thank you for joining us. Today we have another new star guest and we I would like to welcome on Andy. Welcome Andy. Hi. So let's begin with okay. where you're based, how old you are and just tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm uh, near Aurora, Ontario. I'm uh, 53 years old. I, uh, I own uh, and operate a small machine shop. You're looking at the entire company right now. And uh, it's a one man show operation. And we, uh, well, my, my wife actually helps me, Robin, my, uh, my, my loving wife. Uh, she does the bookkeeping, but as far as uh, the actual uh, hands-on stuff, it's just me. And we have our shop on our rural property and uh, yeah. I don't know what else to stuff. You got any hobbies? No. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, with this property, there's no time for hobbies anyway. So uh, uh, maintenance and firewood and um, yeah, just making sure everything works is my hobby. Sounds cool. Yeah. Okay, so let's um, let's talk about your vegan journey. So when did you first become vegan and what was it that led you there? So what led us there was a, um, I guess a documentary we saw in 2008, 2009 called Food Inc. And um, it was, a, um, I guess a doc put together by uh, Michael Pollan. And it shows more the side of um, how, how industry has impacted uh, the food industry, like how, uh, how automation and the mass production has, uh, has sort of uh, changed our way of eating. Is the wind too loud, by the way? Should I be going indoors? It's fine. I can still hear you. It just sounds like there's a, there's a storm coming on your well, end. storm coming, but <laughs> the wind picking up. But you know, I just move a little bit closer so you can hear me. But uh, so that's the first um, exposure we got. We, we had to uh, what's happening in our, in our food industry. And uh, <clears throat> during that movie, there's a uh, there's a scene about factory farming, and there's one shot where a uh, a cow, a downer cow that can't stand any longer, is being pushed around by a forklift. And I still have it in my uh, I still it burned uh, it burned an image in my mind. I still can't get it out, and I stopped eating beef then and there. And that still didn't change me for other animals. For some reason, it took a while longer. I'm a little bit ashamed to say that. Uh, so we, we started down this road more for a, um, a health reason. And, um, oh, sorry, am I losing you? No, we can still hear you. I just lost your face. Okay. Yeah, the <laughs> um, power was going out. Sorry. So. We, 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 we went down this road more for health reasons because of uh, what's happening with the food industry. And um, we, uh, I was saying, I was ashamed to say, we actually used to raise our own chickens because we didn't want to be part of the factory farm. We didn't want to support any factory farming. So, and at the time we were pretty ignorant thinking that, uh, well, you can't survive without meat. There's, there's no way anybody could survive without eating meat or animal products. That's ridiculous. So we decided we would raise our own hens and we really enjoyed it up until the point where we had to cut their throats and bleed them out. And it was terrible. And we did that for four years and every year got worse. We really enjoyed having the chickens and caring for them the entire year. And then come the fall, it was a dreaded day where we had to do the dirty on them and uh, we would be in tears. And every year got a bit worse until we both sort of looked at each other and said, what the hell are we doing? Let's, let's not do this anymore. So then we became vegetarian and um, started to educate ourselves on, on vegan diet. And 
that sort of progressed. And I would say maybe about a year of being vegetarian, then we became vegan. So uh, at about the age of 45, we turned, we turned vegan. And yeah, so now we're 53, both of us are 53 and we, we've never looked back and we'll never go back. That's amazing. That must have been really hard to, to put yourself through that. Well, it's, uh, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's as hard as it was for us, it was worse for the animals. So I don't, uh, I don't think of myself, but we, we didn't go vegan for ourselves. We went vegan for the animals. And um, I think most of the long-term vegans are like that. Most people who are, who go vegan and stay vegan are that way because of the animals, I think. Yeah, of course. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think, I think it's, imp I think it's important to kind of, you know, to take in that, of course, it's for the animals, but I think also, you know, the damage that it does to us as well, I don't think it's spoke about enough, you know, mm -hmm. people don't think about, you know, obviously it's horrible what people are doing, but, you know, there's, that's going to cause some mental damage for somebody doing that. I, you know? I agree. Mm hmm yeah so that that's basically been our journey and um through that through that time frame you know we've had friends and family asking us about our our, our choices and we've tried to educate everybody we come across is um you know that there there is <laughs> there is a good health reason to go vegan and um you can live without animal product without eating animal products so We've, we've lost some friends along the way because of it. And we've gained some awesome friends uh, along the way because of it. And that feels great when you, when you have a little community um, that you have as a support, they, they see it the way you see it and they fight the same fight. That makes a huge difference. Yeah, for sure. Um, Mary and Charles and Stephen. So where, where did you meet your fellow vegans? Well, our little V gang that we, that we sort of clicked together is, uh, they're high school friends. Okay. And, uh, yeah. We were, we were never really close in high school, but there was a, uh, a high school reunion. Uh, I think it was three years ago now. And of course <laughs> the, the topic of veganism came up and um we gelled from that point on so now we're we're very very close and uh, it feels great being in their company that's amazing i love i love hearing when when people have fellow vegan friends because it doesn't happen often and when you go yeah. vegan it can be very difficult like especially in the the lonely department because there just isn't anyone around that's like exactly. you I mean, I'm assuming your your wife went vegan exactly the same time as you. Is that correct? Yeah, I couldn't. Uh, Team effort. I, I can't understand how some people could have relationships um, with, uh, you know, uh, marriages or or that very you know, very close relationships with people who don't see the same side of uh, how veganism works for for that person and how they can, you know be comfortable with with what they're choosing to do and have their partner not not be on board i i don't know how so i know people do it and and that's great everyone's different but i couldn't and my wife couldn't so we we do everything together we're joined at the hip except interviews because she's shy <laughs> oh bless her well she's here in spirit yeah and that's okay <laughs> so when you did go vegan what kind of reactions did you get from your friends and your family? Uh, yeah, they thought we were nuts and uh, going down the wrong path. But, you know, a family, they, they supported us. They, they didn't change. But, um, you know, they, if we were invited, which, which was seldom, if we were invited to occasions, some of them would accommodate our, our uh, diet but they we're very far uh, few and far between uh, those invitations we would mainly have 
gatherings here so that way we could ensure that you know we would have quality kind food available so um yeah there still hasn't been you know it's been eight years and um no one's really jumped on board and we've had you know people say oh i wish i could i'd love to that kind of uh, common response but nobody's really gotten into it and um there's been a few friends that have actually there have been a few friends that have um and one family member my sister-in-law and and uh, and her partner have as well so um but for the amount of people that we know it's sort of disheartening uh not having you know over it's been a long it's been a long time that you know we've we've sort of been preaching not, not preaching but encouraging people to um to look into the lifestyle and for the right reasons and uh not too many people have jumped on board so is where you live is it very um meat orientated then oh yeah it's your your typical north american um diet which is you know meat dairy eggs and fast food low quality stuff so it's just yeah it's it's your typical uh it's your typical north american diet is, that's what's around here so when you both went vegan did you find it difficult to cut all that out oh very much so yeah it was uh it was tough it was tough for for about a year like well the, the meat wasn't too difficult for us but definitely the dairy and eggs were difficult for us um when i say difficult like it's just it's just getting used to it um you know you get those cravings and but for me when when i get cravings or if i think about you know past flavors i just think about the animals and it sets me off and, and i don't i don't care for it any longer but um yeah it was a it was a learning curve my wife very fortunately is an amazing cook I and, hope so. <laughs> uh, oh, it helps big time so we it took us a few years, you know, to find products that she could substitute and work with. But, you know, we, we try and eat a lot of whole foods as well, which is easy to work with. Um, but, you know, those cheeses that are coming around now, like the nut cheeses, uh, they're incredible. Uh, so, so many great options. I don't know if you, do you have many options around you for, for yeah, vegan? So where I live is actually very vegan friendly. Like we have like every single restaurant around my town is has loads of options for us. And we have, I think, two fully vegan restaurants. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So we're we're very well catered for in my town. Right. So it makes it so much easier to uh yeah, to socialize and and to have that those incredible flavors. And yeah, so luckily my wife is new is an amazing chef well she's a she's a cook i call her a chef but she's she's just your average cook she's a house, house chef she's amazing amazing so when you um what was the thing that you struggled with the most was there a particular thing that you kept craving um i guess cheeses maybe cheese and did you um did you go to cold turkey with cheese did you stop eating all cheeses because you didn't like the oh. plant-based versions? Yeah, we sort of tapered off and uh, there were some, you know, frustrating moments where it's like, oh, I just want a piece of cheese. Um, so I would say, you know, it took it took a few months to to um, to sort of taper right off and and uh, and, you know, stay true to the vegan style lifestyle. But um, yeah, there there was there was a little bit of time there that was that was frustrating and what was it that your partner struggled with the most uh, that as well the yeah, same cheese. yeah and and dairy like milk and eggs as well but the meat wasn't difficult for us the, the meat wasn't wasn't very difficult we gave that up pretty quick after the chickens like before uh, the, actually while we were raising chickens for those five years or four years or five years um we didn't eat any any other meats just our own chickens that we raised and killed so um when we stopped 
eating chicken, then yeah, we, we had already been off meat for a long time and um, other meats. And when we gave that up, we, we didn't go back. It wasn't, it wasn't hard for us to give up that stuff. So do you still have chickens now? Like rescue no. chickens or anything? We were thinking we might get them again one day for pets and or for sanctuary, like for, um, for rescuing. Same as we would our dogs, like we have two dogs that we've rescued. And we've rescued many dogs over the years, over the last 12 years. We've, we've, uh, we only adopt, um, animals, uh, from shelters. We That's don't, good. we don't, I don't, I don't uh, agree with the breeding, uh, ideas. It's, it's all about money and profit. And, um, it's not that we've got so many animals that need homes. There's no reason for breeding. Yeah, absolutely. I agree a hundred percent. So I would, I would love to get chickens again. And, um, but chickens do, you know, they require some help, uh, some maintenance and um, a little structure. And you got to, you, you can't really keep them inside because they would make a heck of a mess. So, yes. um, <laughs> so, oh, but they are awesome little creatures. They, um, they do have their own little personalities. And um, I think one day we'll probably end up having some for, uh, I, I don't like to say pets, more companions and, uh, and just to, uh, you know, rescue rescue them from from a, a bad situation yeah of course so what do you love about chickens they um they're just they're just uh mellow little creatures they just scratch around and um lay in the sun and um yeah they're just like any other animal they've got their own little personalities and uh i just like watching them i i uh I like being around them um they're fun. We, when we would raise chickens, we actually had some roosters as well. So the, um, the hens would actually have their own broods at times and they would hatch their own chicks. Oh, wow. And that, that was incredible to watch, to watch the moms teaching the chicks, uh, you know, where to scratch and peck. And that was really, really fun and amazing to watch. So I miss uh, that. Are hens very like protective of, the, of their babies? Oh yeah. Yeah. Some of them, yeah, some of them, they would give you a good peck if you, you know, you sort of got too close and they would, they would charge you, but they, they, they can't, they can't hurt you, but no. they were definitely, uh, they try. <laughs> they were, yeah. Which I liked as well. Cause it's like, it shows you that, you know, all animals, they they just want to live and, and, uh, they want to take care of their, of their own. So yeah, chickens are not brainless little things. They they um they're pretty cool animals. Yeah, I agree. I like chickens. I love watching them do their little um scratchy dance. Yeah, it, it always entertains me. And that do you, they. Do that? So I don't, but my mum keeps chickens. Well, she's got ducks now, but she had chickens, and I yeah. used to love just being in her garden. And I very I very often don't wear shoes outside. Um, uh-huh. and I used to just find it really funny. I'd sit on the bench. And they'd all the chickens would come to my feet and just like peck my feet, thinking it was food. <laughs> and I just found it hilarious. <laughs> it didn't hurt. <laughs> but it I was, can't yeah. Yeah, experience that, but <laughs> <laughs> well, when you've got chickens again, you got something to look forward to. <laughs> Brilliant. So um, what would you say that you miss the most? that you can't you know since going vegan what is it that you miss um i i'm i don't really miss anything um but i uh i do realize that the flavors you know from animal products are 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 incredible they're 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 great flavors but they're not worth that life they're not worth that suffering so um i don't really miss anything i know they taste great and i know um you know, if I see a, 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 a picture or if I'm at a restaurant and I'll see an animal product that that memory that will flash back of, uh, oh, yeah, that, that tastes great. And then I, you know, I sort of snap out of it because I realized, well, wait a second, that was an animal. And I don't have that. I don't have a craving, but I, I and I don't really miss anything. But I do recognize that those those products, they taste great. And and this is the problem is yeah. they do. And, you know, people are so used to it. Um, but nowadays with so many great options coming, coming around that, 
you get great flavors and um it's it's easy to uh, to transition nowadays i can't imagine you know 30 years ago or even 20 years ago how difficult it was uh, yeah. first of all would it was it would be much more um rare to find a fellow vegan to sort of uh chum up with and um and there weren't any real products to sort of help you transition if you were really craving those 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 animal products so right now it's so easy and i tell people that it's so easy to transition so what is your favorite plant-based food at the moment well i i've got to go with the beyond sausage i really like the beyond sausage and uh, i know it's highly processed it's not health food but <laughs> <laughs> yeah i have to agree they're pretty good i tried them um, a little while ago i'll only ever buy them when they're on offer but they just looked like because they're really fat and mm -hmm. that's, that's not normally what they're like so i was like, oh i give them a try and i quite like them so yeah i agree with you on that they're good yeah there's a lot of great stuff out there right now and great restaurants too that, that are accommodating the vegan uh, choices I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, especially with social media now. I, I think it's exposing a lot of um, problems in the food industry. And um, I think the general population is starting to realize, you know, we're not just a bunch of freaks. Uh, we may be freaks, but we're freaks for the right reasons, in my opinion. <laughs> Absolutely. We're freaks in a good way. I think so. I agree. <laughs> proud to be weird yeah that's, that's my motto <laughs> so how would you say that veganism has impacted your life um i'd say it's a uh, equal parts anguish and joy i guess or anguish and pride maybe because i'm very proud to be vegan but then you know you I think, and I and I see a lot of the the horrible situations that animals are going through. So ignorance is bliss. If you, if you don't if you don't know about it, life's easy. But who wants to be ignorant? And why wouldn't we want to try and fix this problem? So I would say choosing a vegan lifestyle is incredibly difficult, but incredibly rewarding as well. What, what, in your opinion, is difficult about it? Knowing, knowing that every day. So much suffering is happening. That's the tough part. Yeah, for sure. I agree with that. That's something for me recently I've been finding really difficult. I've really yeah. opened up myself to that. So, yeah, I get that. Yeah. That is... That's the tough part. The good part that I'm doing, I'm doing what I can and um, I'm proud of it. So that's the good part. So have you been um, active and in the activism? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> there was a, a situation we had. <clears throat> we, we live in a rural area and next to us, there's a public uh, uh, forest and uh, last June I think it was so June 2020 um, there were a bunch of uh, guinea fowl that were abandoned right near right next to our property in this public park area for this public forest well these um, these guinea hens ended up flying over the fence and coming over into our paddock and so we cared for them for that summer because we, we were pretty familiar with caring for birds. So um, I, still, I, I still had a lot of our old equipment and our feeders and our watering cans. And so we set them up in a garden shed <clears throat> that we had. There was 20 of them. And come the end of summer, I was thinking, well, I don't really want to keep 20 hens and um, so I looked at, I looked for a sanctuary that would take them, but because of COVID, there, 
there weren't many sanctuaries that were open to taking on new rescues. And eventually I found a place and it, it's, uh, it's about an hour away from here, from our place. It's in Ontario as well. And it's called um, Silver Willow Sanctuary Farm. And Laura MacArthur, she's amazing. She, she runs this place and she said, you know what, we, we don't have any room we'll make room so oh, every other person turned us away and said sorry you're on your own but she didn't she stepped up and she said we, we just have to we just have to make it right for the animals so from that point on it's like i know where i'm gonna go spend some time to volunteer because i was really thankful to her sorry for being so emotional no don't ever apologize i really appreciate your vulnerability it's really nice to see especially a man be so open <laughs> with his emotions so yeah um so you know i fell in love with the sanctuary my wife and i both did and uh, so we've been volunteering there and helping them out and you know with donations and work uh, when we can so we've, we've we've been involved with them um other activism we we are part of a uh, uh a little environmental group <clears throat> excuse me environmental group local environmental group to um sort of reverse climate or stop climate change help stop climate change so um we've sort of done some some um i guess uh what do you call it uh, marches or events with them and also um greta thunberg has my heart so when she came on board, we, we marched for Fridays for the Futures. And um, yeah, so that's about the extent of our activism. We're not super active, but we, we, we do participate. That's lovely. So what kind of um, animals are in the sanctuary that you volunteer for? Other than they, chickens, obviously. They rescue everything. They rescue everything, cows, horses, pigs, goats donkeys they've rescued everything they it's a beautiful place um yeah i don't know if you maybe i'll put you in touch with laura you might want to speak with her she's a fantastic lady yeah for sure it sounds like it i haven't had any um rescuers on here yet i nearly did but she couldn't do it um okay. so yeah that'll be i'd appreciate that that'll be great to have a conversation oh. with her if she's interested she yeah. might she in the she's sort of in the movie industry she's uh she to support her her sanctuary she actually brings animals to movie sets and she's a, an animal wrangler which um so if they need you know a a chicken or a bunch of chickens in a country western scene or whatever or in a country scene she'll she'll bring some of her chickens and have them as a backdrop to the movie oh, that's cool it's pretty interesting yeah so have you formed any particularly special bonds with any of the animals? Ooh, at, at her sanctuary? Yeah. Um, well, our, our hens, we, we've been over, we've built them uh, some nesting boxes and um, some perches for them to sit on. Uh, we also converted, a, helped her, helped Laura convert a, uh, an old camper trailer into a, a chicken house so uh oh that's so cool yeah, it was pretty neat because she was running out of space and there were so many animals that she was like she just doesn't say no she's so oh, positive her. yeah she sounds yeah, amazing so, um but as far as um making connections with animals we don't really spend too much time um interacting with them when we're there we're usually working um, yeah. but there are some I think it's a, I don't know if it's a duck or a goose, but holy smokes, are they ever affectionate? Some of them there, they just nuzzle up to you and they're just like a, a dog. Really, really. And I, I never thought like even more so than the chickens we had, those, the chickens we had were, were, were cool, but they weren't really, you know, come up to you and, and sort of nuzzle you. But some of these geese are, or ducks that, that Laura has, they're incredibly affectionate. Really. Oh, that's so really, beautiful because i wasn't expecting that i wasn't expecting that so it was pretty neat yeah especially if they are geese because geese yeah. are normally like honking you away because they don't want you anywhere near them <laughs> <laughs> might be 
a goose. And there's one that's a little bit of a gray color. And um, I don't know if it's a male or a female, but man, they're super affectionate. Oh, that's so lovely to hear. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. So <clears throat> I think that's all our questions that I have for you. Yeah. I've got one more, one more question left. Okay. It's the big one. <laughs> the one I ask everybody. So if there's anybody out there watching that hasn't quite has like is thinking about it but hasn't quite made the plunge to veganism what one piece of advice would you give them i think you, you they would need to get connected to the animals they would need to understand that the animals aren't food we've made them into food but they are actually individuals and once you realize that if you have a, any heart, you will not want to exploit them. So I would say build that connection with an animal and understand that every animal is alike. It's just a different form, but we all want a good life. Absolutely. Yeah, that's some good advice. I like that. Going yeah. back straight back to animals and the bonds, it's important. I think that's, it's very important. Yeah, that's key for me anyway. Thank you. Well, I've really enjoyed chatting to you. It's been wonderful. And again, thank you so much for your vulnerability. Like, it's really appreciated. I love that. That's just me. I, that's <laughs> just, yeah, I, I'm not a good poker player. I don't play poker. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hide emotions. Oh, bless you. That's good. That's a good. That's very good. So um, if there's anyone in the audience that would like to get in touch with you, how can they reach you? I guess just Facebook or Messenger. Okay. That's cool. Awesome. So thank you everyone in the audience watching. I hope, I know it's been emotional. Hopefully it's hit you in the soft, what, in the right spot as it has me. Um, and thank you for joining us. And if you would like to be our next star vegan if you are already vegan please do get in touch with me i am luna bloomer um, i run the group vegan bloomers on facebook so come and join that too um, or you can email me on vegan bloomers at gmail.com um, yeah i realized i didn't introduce myself again <laughs> i always forget to do that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah hopefully you've enjoyed this too and um we will see you next time much love everyone <laughs>